Let's talk about Apple's all new Mac Studio with the incredible sounding M1 Ultra Silicon. Hey everybody, welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you have not taken the second to do so already, please go ahead and subscribe and smash that notifications button so you don't miss any of my videos. And with Apple's spring lineup, that is more true than ever. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the new Mac Studio, which looks pretty amazing. And I'm also gonna compare the two different models, one model with the M1 Max processor and the other with the M1 Ultra processor. What is the difference between that $2,000 price? We'll talk about all of that and more in this video. Let's dive into this thing. I'm gonna break this video down into a few different sections. First, I'm gonna talk about the design and the ports on the machine. Then we will talk about the performance of the machine. And then I'll compare the two different models, one with the M1 Max and one with the M1 Ultra. If it helps at all, use the chapter markers that are down below to skip to the sections that are most relevant to you. Starting off with the design of the new Mac Studio. Basically, it looks like a few Mac Mini stacked on top of one another. That's what the rumor said and turns out they turned out to be pretty darn accurate. It comes in about 7.7 .7 inches square and just about three and a half inches tall. Most of that top part is housing a giant fan though, which is going to pull air through and push it out the back of the machine. Keeping this cool is going to be very important, especially with that M1 Ultra processor on the inside on the high end unit. On the front of the unit, there are two ports as well as an SDXC card reader. Apple did not go into specifics during its keynote, but it is a UHS-2 card reader, which should give you pretty decent speeds, similar to what we see on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Next to that card reader, there are two Type-C ports. If you choose the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio, those ports will be USB-C ports with up to 10 gigabits per second of data. If you are, on the other hand, getting the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra Silicon on the inside, those will be two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports. If we flip the Mac Studio around and check out those ports, we start off with four Thunderbolt 4 ports. I'm very excited about it. Thunderbolt 4 has many advancements over Thunderbolt 3, and there's a lot of I.O. you can connect via Thunderbolt. So we have four Thunderbolt 4 ports. Following that is a 10 gigabits per second Ethernet jack. Then we have the power connector there in the center, followed by two type A USB ports. These can do up to five gigabits per second of data. Then we have an HDMI output and a pro audio jack. With all of those ports, how many displays can you run with the Mac Studio? In total, the Mac Studio can drive up to five external displays. That is four 6K displays, as well as an additional 4K display over HDMI. That includes Apple's Pro Display XDR or its brand new Studio Display. Performance on the Mac Studio is insane. We don't yet have one in our studio to put to the test, but we can go off of Apple's published benchmark, which compare the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra against Apple's other high-end machines, including the 27-inch iMac and the Mac Pro. Apple says the Mac Studio is up to 90% faster CPU performance than the Mac Pro with the 16-core Xeon processor. It's also up to 60% faster CPU performance than the 28-core Mac Pro, which is the highest-end Mac Pro that Apple sells. And it's up to 3.8 times faster CPU performance than the fastest 27-inch iMac with a 10-core processor. Looking at the GPU, it has up to four and a half times graphics performance than the 27 inch iMac and 80% faster than the fastest Mac graphics card available today. When transcoding video, Apple says it is up to 12 times faster than the 27 inch iMac and up to 5.6 times faster than the 28 core Mac Pro. Any way you slice it, the M1 Ultra in the Mac Studio is absolutely mind blowing. That said, there are a couple downsides we initially noted with the Mac Studio. To start, Apple does not include any peripherals with the Mac Studio. You get the Mac and you get the power cable. Even the Mac Pro comes with a keyboard and mouse included. 
but the Mac Studio is more akin to the Mac Mini, and you'll have to provide your own display, keyboard, mouse, or trackpad. Apple did introduce new color options though. The Magic Keyboard with Touch ID now comes in a silver and black option. There's also a silver and black option of the Magic Mouse and Magic Trackpad. Another downside is that Apple is still utilizing Wi-Fi 6, or 802.11ax. Apple could jump on the Wi-Fi 6e bandwagon that allows for additional bands of networking and improved performance, but Apple still has yet to introduce a product that supports Wi-Fi 6e. The good news is Apple does have that 10 gigabit wired ethernet connection, so if you're in the studio and prefer a wired option, you shouldn't have to worry about Wi-Fi much at all. Finally, the price is very high. Going between the M1 Max version and the M1 Ultra version is a $2,000 price difference. Apple starts the M1 Max version at $1,999, two grand, while the M1 Ultra version comes with a price tag of $4,000. That's quite a bit of a jump. So what do you get going between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra version? Apple does up many of the base configurations when you choose the M1 Ultra. For example, Apple upped the unified memory from 32 gigs to 64 starting out with the M1 Ultra. Apple also has doubled the base storage option, going from 512 to one terabyte. Both machines cap out at eight terabytes of SSD storage, but the M1 Ultra does have a maximum capability of 128 gigs of unified memory, while the M1 Max is still capped at only 64. Additionally, Apple has doubled the other benefits because the M1 Ultra is essentially two M1 Max processors. So you'll have double the media engines, you'll have double the GPU and double the CPU performance, as well double the neural engines. The only other change between these two models is the fact that the M1 Ultra will have the two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports on the front, whereas the M1 Max will only have USB-C on the front. So what do you guys think? This machine looks pretty amazing to me. I'm really eyeing the Mac Studio. Do you guys think this is going to be Apple's best new desktop? Do you think the Mac Pro may be going away? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I have a lot more video content coming your way.